Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. Um, before we get started, I just have a few announcements that I need to highlight for you all. Uh, the first, we have two poster thingies here for you. These are going to be out on the bulletin board. Um, the first is for a singles banquet that's going to be out at the Fellowship Center. It's on May 20th at 5.30 p.m. And there is going to be a bluegrass, a bluegrass band, the Werner Family Bluegrass Band. And you can register by calling Doris or Pat, and their numbers are on this paper. So if you're interested, just go check out the bulletin board. Um, the other thing that we have is going to be at Palmyra United Christian Church on Sunday, May 21st at 7 p.m. It is Steve Hess and Southern Salvation live in concert. So if you're interested in that, you can also check out the bulletin board for that. Um, also, there's going to be a sign-up sheet going around for the taco dinner that is going to be taking place on Wednesday the 24th at 6 p.m. Um, also, this May 16th, I'm not sure what day of the week that is, is there, there's a board meeting at 7.30 p.m. And then also coming up on the 21st, we have our church family picnic at Lions Lake at 12.45. Uh, there's going to be barbecue chicken and paper products provided, but we ask that you please bring one hot and one cold dish and lawn chairs. So I believe that covers it all. Please bow with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, pause this morning to thank you for um, just the great God that you are and for all the blessings that you've given to us. Um, we pray that as we sing this morning, as we come to your throne, we would... Um, that you would reveal your majesty to us and that uh, we would just be able to stand in awe of everything that you've done for us. We just pray that um, as we sing this morning, we would uh, sing the lyrics in a way that is worshiping to you. I just uh, thank you for all the blessings you've given to us. In your name we pray, amen. Please stand with me as we sing Your Grace is Enough. Great is your friend. 
next song is going to be Good Good Father. Try that one more time. There we go.
Good morning. Um, one of the perks of having a mom is that she gets to boss you around. And since my mom's not here, I am in charge of the flowers. So if you are a mom, if you could please stand up so we could recognize you with a flower. And if you are a spouse of a mom that's not here, if you could stand up so we know all the moms get flowers. Thank you.
thank you moms. I have a little thank you card here. Uh, this is from Mabel Forney. She says, thank you for the, the hanging planter. It is doing very good and I have it on my porch. So uh, Mabel, happy Mother's Day. Let's bow to the Lord in prayer. Father, we, we just thank you for mothers. If it weren't for mothers, none of us would be here this morning. And uh, so we just thank you for our mothers and ask, Lord, that you might guide and direct each one of them, Father. Uh, Lord, that you would just uh, place a, a special blessing in their day as we honor them today. But this is so hard uh, to think about uh, one day being set aside for moms when we really should be honoring our moms every day. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for all that they go through and ask that you would just bless them. Father, um, we, just, we just think of, of so many things that go on in our lives and how our moms are there for us and how they are just so selfless in the things that they do as they care for their children. So Lord, we just, we just praise you uh, for our mothers. And now as we think about our time together this morning, Lord, I pray that you would be lifted up on high. Lord, for you are the great creator and Lord, we are here to worship you in all that we say, in all that we do. And so even as we honor our mothers and fathers, Lord, we honor you. And we ask now that you would bless our time together as we come and as we sing songs of praise and worship unto you. As we look into your word, may you use it to, to speak to our hearts in a way that we need in a way that is useful, in a way that, oh Lord, you can work in us to draw us closer to you. So we ask your blessing now upon our time together, in Jesus' name, amen. If you would, turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 2, and uh, we're going to read a small portion of scripture here, and uh, then the ushers are going to come forward for this morning's offering. Exodus chapter 2. We'll be reading verses 1 to 10 this morning. Exodus chapter 2. Now a man from the house of Levi went and took as his wife a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she took him a basket made of bulrushes, and daubed it with bit, bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the river bank. And his sister stood at a distance to know, to know what would be done to him. It's interesting what happens there in that river. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, while her young women walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant woman, and she took it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her to, to go. So the girl went and called the child's mother, and Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she named him Moses, because she said, I drew him out of the water. May the Lord add his blessing to this portion of scripture this morning as his Holy Spirit works and ministers to our hearts this Mother's Day. Ushers, if you would, please. I'd like to ask Luke Fenstermacher to add the blessing to the giving of the offering. Father, we come before you this morning and we say thank you 
thank you, God, for what you have given to us. And we rejoice in you today, asking now that as we give back a portion of what you have given to us, God, that you would accept it as an act of worship. Thank you, God, for all you do for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand as we sing, He Leadeth Me.
God is so good, He cares for you and for me, and we come to this day, a Mother's Day, and uh, we think about our mothers and the great sacrifices, maybe some of them have uh, given for us, think about the great sacrifice that God gave for us. Thinking about that, um, there's a key missing. There's a key missing to our elevator. And so if you know where it is, if you have it, uh, or if you've seen it, um, could you, if you do, could you get it back? Um, Because we can't use our elevator until we get the key back. Um, So thinking about, uh, you know, God's goodness and... and, um, his, his grace, His mercy, and, and thinking about the elevator uh, and, and what a need that is when we need it. Um, I think about the, the needs um, for each one of us and how sometimes they differ. Um, I, I think about that and I, I think about parents, uh, think about things that they give and things that they share, uh, the knowledge that they impart. Um, on us, and it's interesting, I don't often go shopping for a suit, 
Um, but uh, I, I think about the, the day when my dad took me shopping for a suit. Um, I, I didn't, I had, I had funny looking suits when I was a, a child and um, uh, my parents just picked them out for me and made me wear them, right? You know, I don't know if you've ever experienced that, you know, you funny looking clothes your mom and dad picked out for you to wear. And, and uh, I, I do remember though, as I got older and I, I, I started to, to see God's leading in, in ministry and my dad, of course, you know, wasn't a Christian. Um, and, uh, and, and I remember some of the things that he, that he kind of, you know, gleaned into my life that I thought was kind of interesting. One of the things that he, he said to me when he first took me, um, shopping for a suit was that you need to take the arm of the suit and you need to crumple it all up because you're going to be a preacher. You're going to be sitting and you're going to be standing. You're going to be in front of people. You don't want wrinkles in your suit. So you take the arm of the suit and you crinkle it all up and then you let it go and if there's wrinkles in it you don't want that suit and I thought wow this is coming from an unsaved guy you know and that was just his impression of of preachers you know that he didn't want to see a preacher up front with a wrinkled suit on um, not that he went to church or not that he saw that many preachers um, Billy Graham I guess was really the the only preacher that he really you know as I was a you know young guy growing up that the only one that he would ever even listen to um, but I thought about that, you know, the things that our parents kind of glean into our lives, how much do we take that as I was thinking about a, a Mother's Day sermon? As I thought about different things, I thought about things that, you know, of course, mothers, you know, Mother's Day, mom instilled in me, you know, and I, I thought about those, those different things that, that I learned from my mother. And then, then I started thinking about the Bible. And I started thinking about, you know, the way a child should go. That we need to teach our children the way that they should go. The way that they should go in later days of, of life. And Solomon kind of came to my mind. And I st started thinking about Solomon and, and his mother. She, she taught him well. But it's interesting as you read some of the scriptures, you come across passages that his mother taught him certain things. One of them was that you weren't supposed to be basically around a lot of women. And what did Solomon end up doing? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. 700 wives and 300 concubines. Yeah, he didn't do what his mom taught him. But I thought about the things that he wrote in later days of his life. Those things that mom taught him early came back to him. And he was able to write great things in the Bible. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. And so thinking about all of that, I, 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 struggle with, I struggle with maybe what we call the hallmark holidays, you know, as a preacher. You know, do, do you preach on those things? I mean, Christmas and Easter, we certainly need to preach Christmas and Easter kind of sermons. But then I, I started thinking about, you know, the hallmark type, you know, the, hmm, how do I preach a, a Mother's Day sermon, a Father's Day sermon? And so I kind of put this one all together for all of us, you know, so this doesn't just point out any specific person today, although we honor our moms today, but then as I prayed, we really should honor moms every day. And so thinking of a sermon that kind of takes us to that place that each one of us can leave with something. And I started going through different resources. I found a great thinker and a great writer by the name of G.K. Chesterton. And I came across the question that he asks. He says, how can it be a large career to tell other people's children about the rule of three? Here he's referring to mathematics, a mathematical problem. And he says, 
and a small career to tell one's own children about the universe. So let me state that again. His question is, how can it be a large career to tell other people's children about the rule of three and a small career to tell one's own children about the universe? And he adds to that another question. How can it be broad to be the same thing to everyone and narrow to be everything to someone? And he answers his questions here by saying, no. A woman's function is laborious, but because it is gigantic, not because it is minute. In his book, What's Wrong with the World, Chesterton says, I will pity Mrs. Jones for the hugeness of her task. I will never pity her for its smallness. He says, consider the hats a mother wears. Chef, dietitian, nurse, philosopher, cosmetologist, mathematician, physician, lawyer, judge, spiritual director, moral compass, teacher of discernment, aesthetics, manners, temperance, and modesty, life coach, personal manager, home organizer, chauffeur, referee, head janitor, imager of the church, and example of faithfulness and respect to her husband. Chesterson goes on, he says, in short, a mother is a shaper of souls for time and for eternity. Her calling along with fatherhood is the greatest and highest vocation on earth. Thanks, Mom. Exodus chapter 2. Now a man from the house of Levi went and took as his wife a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. She did that because, of course, there was something going on in the land. What was this child's name? Moses. What was his mom's name? What was it? Pronounce it nice and loud. Get that? Yeah, I pronounce it Yachabed, Yachbed, Yoshabed, Yachbed. Who is she? She's Moses' mom. Moses' mom. Today is a day when we kind of take time to honor the one human being who unselfishly gives of herself to us. Time and time again, without asking for anything in return. Maybe she does, but that's okay. She's mom. And in here, in this passage, Exodus chapter 2, we're introduced to a woman, and she stands out. She really does. She stands out as, as one of the greatest mothers revealed in the passages of Scripture. Her selfless love, her sacrifice that she made, she made a sacrifice so that God's people could travel out in an exodus from Egypt. But today I'm not just speaking to moms as we look at Yachbed. In this passage about this woman, there are lessons that kind of speak to each one of us. First, we, we see who she is. She, she's an Israelite. She's an Israelite. One, one of God's chosen people. She was also a member of the tribe of Levi. And if you remember the tribe of Levi, um, they, were, they were the priests or they were the ones who carried out the, the, the duty of the priests in the tabernacle, which, which later became the temple. She and her husband Amram, were, were, they, they, they were very dedicated 
to God. They were willing to defy the orders of Pharaoh so that they might keep the commandments of God. And so here as we look at, at, at Yachbed and, and what was taking place, we see that, that she had some incredible strength. She had amazing strength. The, fairy, the, the, the decree of, of Pharaoh, we kind of see in verses 15 to, to 22 of chapter 1. Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one, one of whom was named Zipporah and, and the other Pua, when you serve as midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the, the king of Egypt commanded. But let the male child live. So the king of Egypt called the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this? And let the male children live. The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are, are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and grew very strong and because the midwives feared God he gave them families and then Pharaoh commanded all his people every son that is born to the Hebrews you shall cast them into the Nile but you shall let every daughter live so so here we see Pharaoh remember I said in the reading that 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 there's something interesting that happens in that river here Mose, Moses is released by his mother in the very river that the people of Egypt were using to kill the babies, the firstborn sons. What do you think ran through Moses' mom, Yachbed's mind as she released him in a basket in that same river? She had incredible courage to be able to release her own son. But you see, she refused to, to give in to a godless system, a godless world view. And she stood for what her faith, her God, was doing and giving her son over to him, releasing him. And so I think for his parents, we can gain a lot from that portion of Scripture, that idea, that, that belief, that strong faith. As parents, to be able to release our children. To release our children so that God might use them. May God give us as parents the strength and the courage to stand for that which is right in these dark days. Men and women who demand more for their children than the world can give them. Parents who are willing to say, enough is enough. My child is going to learn the way of the Lord. We struggle with things that are going on in this world. We struggle from things that are happening. We can make a difference. God has challenged us to be salt and light. To take a stand. To teach our children. Courage. Do we have it? Do we have courage? Courage to stand for what is right. You see, she took a stand because of the courage that she had built up from the Lord. And she was able to resist the world. The world was crying out for the death of her son. But this mother, Yachbed, she stood strong in the face of the attacks and she placed her son above the will of the world. So for you and I today, the world demands that parents hand over their children. And it, this is kind of a difficult topic. It's a difficult thing for us as moms and dads. What are we teaching of our children? Are we training our children at young ages to... to are, we, are we training our children to honor mom and dad? 
in the home? What's that look like? What's it look like to be able to teach our children to honor mom and dad? You know, it starts with mom and dad. Mom, do you honor dad? Dad, do you honor, okay, husband, do you honor your wife? Wife, do you honor your husband in the home? Not just in front of your kids, not just when your kids are up during the day, but do you honor each other in front of them? That's huge. I think today so often we want to run each other down. But are we honoring them in front of our children? Here, Yachbed, she, she was placed in, in God's Hall of Fame in Hebrews chapter 11. Right? She was placed there she, because of her faith in God, because she believed in God. And she had the opportunity then, because she released her son into God's hands, she was given the opportunity to be able to take him and teach him about Jehovah and about honoring, about honoring other people. She was able to resist the world. The world demands so much. And we give our most precious jewel, possession, not our possession, they're God's, but we give them over to the world so often. And she was able to teach her child, be able to raise him up so that he might be used of God. And she released him into that river, a river that, that was used as an instrument to destroy the other babies. It took faith for Yachbed to be able to do that, to release her child into the hands of that river, the things that were happening there. But she was able to raise her child. And you know what? We are required to do something. You and I are required to do something. All we can do as moms and dads is our best. That's what we're required to do. We're, we're to do our best. And may I say that, that we need to love our children. We need to love them and teach them about love. Teach them about acceptance. Give them Bible teaching. Allow them to experience God's love and His truth. If you give your children to God, if you give them to God, And then, if you give them to God and kind of give them everything that you can, as you learn, as you read scripture, as, as you go to church and learn from Sunday school, and you take that home with your child. How many of us, how many of us leave church on a Sunday and, and the ride home is about, about lunch? You know, how many of us, you know, we leave church and the, and the discussion in the car and that ride is about lunch, you know. How often is it about the Sunday school lessons that we learn? Or maybe, maybe, you know, about the, the message that the pastor brought or maybe a song that we sang. Do we do that with our kids? Are we teaching them to reflect what they learned on a Sunday? You know, really, we, we, look at, we were looking at the days of creation, and we're going to get into this one again later on, but I, I want to challenge us, as we look at the days of creation and we see that day of rest, and we've kind of established that in our culture as Sunday, how many times are we using Sunday to be more than just coming to church and then going about the rest of the day? How often are we using that time to instill in our children's hearts and minds? What God wants them to think on, to ponder during the week. You know, is Sunday kind of a rejuvenation day for us? We've come through a long week and it's, it's at the end of that week, you know. Ah, I get the day off. Or do we take it as the beginning of the week? Because we know the week is going to be long. The week is going to be hard and we take... Sunday then to get us ready and prepared for the week that is before us. If we take it in that view, we really need to be talking about the things that, that we've learned, 
the devotions that we've had and using it during the week to help us as we go through the week. Opportunities to be able to share with somebody about Jesus Christ. Even someone that has offended us. That we now have maybe something to share with them or to speak into their lives during the week or maybe to apologize for the way we've done something wrong. Are our children seeing that in our lives? If you can give your, your children to God and then give them all the God that you can, I think you've done your very best. I think then they have a foundation that they can use. So let me, let me bring that back and kind of maybe put it in practical terms as we kind of conclude here for this Mother's Day. When, when we're raising our children, we, we need to use God-centered forms, I believe, of parenting. We need to make God's Word the standard for us. The standard of training, not, not the world's. So what is honor? What does it mean to honor? We need to show honor to others. I mean, we know that. We see that in Scripture we need to, to teach other children about honoring others. We need to teach our children to honor others. Think about what Yachbed went through here. She released Moses into the river, and Moses was taken by Pharaoh's daughter, and then Pharaoh's daughter released her back to Yachbed, and Yachbed had to teach Moses and train Moses and she taught him about Jehovah. I wonder what was going on behind the scenes there. I wonder what she was teaching, how she was teaching him. You know, was she teaching him in secret? I, I mean, like, like, hey, Moses, you know, this is your God, Jehovah. But you can't tell it to anybody. Because if you mention it, Pharaoh will have you killed. But yet we see that she was teaching him. And she was training him. She was sharing her belief, her faith in God Jehovah. I wonder how it went on in the, in the home there. How she poured out to him about God. Because we know as he grew up, he believed in God. He stood for what was right. You see, a mother's love is incredibly strong. A mother today, a Christian mother today, needs to be superwoman strong. I mean, she needs to be unbelievably strong because of so many things that happen in this life. And she needs to take a stand. And Yachbed certainly took a stand. And then, then she needs to be a mother of incredible sharing. To be able to share the honor you and I are called upon to show to others is really, it has, it has nothing to do with, with merit. It has nothing to do with that. We need to, to teach others to honor because God tells us to honor. So I believe in, in Yachbed's training of Moses, she was teaching him how to honor Pharaoh and how to honor Pharaoh's daughter and what that would look like and how that would over, overspill into his life as a young man. We need to honor others regardless of whether or not they deserve it. Honor, I believe, is a debt placed on us by God that can only be paid when we treat them as we would want to be treated ourselves. And so as Moses grew up, he understood how to honor others. Honor Egyptians. And it was tough, but he learned how to honor the Israelites as well, even after they rejected him. 
So a mother. She gives of herself. She pours out her life into the life of her son. In a very real spiritual sense, I believe this is what the Heavenly Father has done for you and I. God gave His only begotten Son to save sinful man. God gave heaven's best for earth's worst. Probably didn't say that right. I've heard it over and over and over again, but think about that. God gave heaven's best. I think it's even a song. He gave heaven's best for earth's worst. He did it simply because he loves you. And so, Yachved gave of herself. A good mother, I believe, gives of herself. And then she gives her children to God. She gave her son here, Yachved. But a good mom and dad give our children to, to God. You know, it's the hardest thing, I, I think, for, for me. One of the hardest things is to release your children to school and, and put them on the bus for that very first day of school. And, and the second is 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 to give them the keys to the car for the first time by themselves. Um, that that is the, the the very hardest. Well, at least for dad, I don't know about mom, but at least for dad, that's that's hard. You're sending them out there into the world to drive with a bunch of crazy people, you know? Oh my goodness! It seems like things get worse and worse, you know. I wonder how my mom and dad felt. I don't know. I, don't, I can't even exp- But maybe it was the same as what I'm experiencing now. To give them the keys. How's that feel? But here, Yachbed, she gave of herself and then she also gave of her son. And you know what? According to the Bible, I see that God gave His Son for you and for me. And when he did, God knew exactly what he was doing. In fact, when Jesus came and died for our sins at Calvary, that was the greatest expression of love the world had ever seen. Yachbed gave her son for Israel, and God gave his son for the world. He died for all. He died for you. And as we come and celebrate and honor moms today, because that's what the day is, we need to remember that we need to honor God each day. We need to honor our moms each day, our fathers each day. How do we do that? I believe it's by having a right perspective and a right view of God. That we need to be strong. We need to stand And we need to love. We need to be salt and light to those around us. I think about that as I look at sports. There are a lot of folks out there that try and be all in all for themselves. But yet the greatest example of a team is being all for one. And for you and I is children of God we need to be all for one all for God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit those three are one we need to have our minds on Him and understand and know that He is sovereign and He knows what He's doing Father Pray for each one of us as we think about this Mother's Day and we honor moms and, and, and we, just, we just think about that. I pray that, Lord, in our homes that, that there, there would be more honor going on, not just this day, but all throughout the year. And, Lord, for each one of us as moms, dads, children, that you might be speaking to us in a special way. You love us, you care for us, you gave us your son to die so that we might live. And so, Father God, I pray now that you would just help each of us to be strong as we're together, but Lord, to be strong as we go out into this world, and that we might honor one another, that we might give honor in our homes, 
and not disrespect, not dishonor. Oh, Lord, help us and thank you for our moms and ask for your blessing upon them in a special way this day. For I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as the worship team comes. a wrinkled suit you know each one of our lives has some wrinkles in it father as we close this time together i pray that you would just be with each one that your holy spirit would minister in a special way to where each one has need father that you would be doing a work in our lives father for we all have have wrinkles lord we sang, I stand in all of you, but Lord, do we really? As we leave this place, do our lives look as though we stand in all of you? Or does it look like we just get wrapped up in the day-to-day -day things of this world? Father, help us as a family, as a body, as individual homes, Lord. I pray that you might be with us, strengthening us to stand in all of you. And then watch the iron, Lord, of your hand straighten out the wrinkles in our lives. In Jesus' name.